Hello there, I'm Dr Katie Abbott and I was thrilled to write Still for the Australia Ensemble last year during 2020. When I was writing the piece, it was smack in the middle of Melbourne's second lockdown. You know, the really long one. And Still is exactly the piece that I wanted to write at that time. I hope it's not packaged as a lockdown piece and it doesn't become known as a lockdown piece just because it happened to be written in 2020, but because I believe the piece speaks more broadly to an audience of musical and human qualities through the performer's interpretation. On the page, the piece looks really sparse and quite simple, but it's difficult in some ways for the performers because it's vulnerable and exposing. And I suppose this is how we were feeling, wasn't it, last year in 2020? So I wanted a way for the audience to be able to empathise with the performers, but also for the performers to empathise with where we found ourselves in the world at that time. I hope that still creates capacity for an audience reflection that stimulates curiosity. Curiosity about ourselves and how we show up in the world and the way that we live. So by creating a metaphorical space within the music through the stillness and the spaces between the notes as well, I think I believe that that's where capacity is born from. Thank you.
So the, probably the biggest technical challenge of this piece is the control of the notes um, in many, many ways. So, so starting the note, for instance, the very, the very first note, um, she writes to start from nothing. And, and clarinet, more than any other wind instrument, can do that incredibly well. Um, but it's still very challenging to, to really start it from nothing without any sort of attack on the note. Um, but really the biggest challenge overall is, is the stamina to play this sort of five minute work um, where there's very little room for, for breathing and extremely long notes with extremely um, strong amount of breath control is required. Um, some of the other challenges are, are the big sort of interval leaps up to the high high C, sort of midway through sort of the climactic moment, and holding that high C that for eternity, it's probably the longest one um, ever. So th this piece, for instance, is, is, is actually much, much harder than, than many people would think just by looking at it. Um, I, I would find it much easier to play something, say, faster and more technically challenging in the more traditional sense. If, if a student was to want to learn this piece, I think the sort of technical things that, that they should do would be a lot of long tone exercises. Um, and there's a many, many different types of ones that you can do, but just exercises that really develop, you know, really good breathing technique from, and you see my patting my stomach, from, from breathing from really down low. Um, I make all my students do these 20 second long note exercises that start very soft and go loud and back to soft in, through all the ranges of the clarinet. Um, that would be one really good exercise. But, but yeah, you really could spend 30 minutes a day just playing long notes if you have the sort of mental fortitude for it. But it's the sort of thing that you would really need to be able to play this piece well. The, 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 I guess the, the challenge of playing with wind players as a pianist, or, or in fact with any other instrument, is really listening to the characteristics of, of those instruments. And, and they're very different between strings and, and, and wind players. Um, the clarinet can do these wonderful uh, start, starting from nothing, breathing crescendos that, of course, the, the piano can't do. But what the piano can do that, that pretty much no other instrument can is to create its own acoustic with the, with the pedal. I mean, the pedal is a magical thing that Chopin sort of famously liberated. So if I have uh, Dave um, standing in front of me, I can, I can immediately sort of open up the air for him by putting my pedal down. And so whatever he does is then, even if I'm not doing anything at all, uh, I I enliven the air that he's, you know, occupying. So, really listening as a pianist to the vibrations in the air, rather than concentrating on what one's fingers are doing, is the absolute first thing that one must do. And that's just part of learning to listen as a as a musician. Uh, many things that pianists concentrate on, mainly mainly the fingers. You know, very preoccupied with uh, with busy fingers. Um, that's that's all very well. But the, the real art of playing the piano on one's own or with, with other players is to listen to uh, the sound, the, the air that's coming out. I mean, I, I particularly like it when, um, when your colleague only notices that you're doing it down the track. You know, you, you, you just um, surreptitiously pedal with them, even though you're not do, doing anything yourself so that you're changing the air. Um, and I, I love, I love doing, doing that, it's a bit sneaky, but also complimentary. Yeah, I, I, it's, now hearing you say all that has sort of, like you said, I'm thinking about these things, they're happening without even me being aware of that. And, and for me, what, what I love about playing this piece actually with Ian is that I can, I, f I feel like we sort of get inside each other's sounds yes. Um, and, and create something completely different. And, and, and we're not just playing sort of together, but inside each other's sounds, if you like. And uh, yeah, not everyone can do that so, so well, I guess. <laughs> I, think that, I think that Katie is exploring that in this piece too. Yeah. You know, she, she is, um, I mean, for instance, she asks me to, at, at many points, 
she asks me to breathe in sympathy with Dave. And of course, there's no reason why I should breathe. I do breathe, but it's something you don't think about. But she makes me consciously breathe with him. And I feel that she's playing with the idea of um, you know, the, the exact mixture of sound that you get when you, when you attack a note with the piano. When I say attack, it doesn't need to be a big sound. But you necessarily have to begin a note in a different way from the clarinet. And when you combine that with the way the, the clarinet player begins the note, which can be terribly soft, you put those two things together and you get a third sound. Yeah. And I think that a lot of this piece is working with that principle that, you know, the, the, the result is more than the sum of the parts. Mm, exactly, yeah.